What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. Episode 22 of the walkthrough. We got Thop's quest on deck. Now, in the last episode, we grabbed a key item. And you'll notice how we have an Academy Glenstone key. And down here, we also have an Academy Glenstone key. Well, one of them is a key that's been used. And the keys are bound to the user. So the one that we found that let us in was fresh. That person never turned it on. The other one we found was somebody's old key that we have now picked up. And we're going to give to Thop and it's gonna be an unfortunate event for him but we need things from him so go ahead and talk to this guy we have a couple times before go to talk and he's just gonna be like you know i can tell you about the school i'm not that good at sorcery but there's this great academy you need to get a key if you find one maybe you should give it to me when you're done and then i say about the glenstone key and he'll tell you about one and then you give him one thank you now, I can go to resume now you'll see we just picked up the erudition emote, which we need that along with one of the BK masks to get into a tower a little bit later. Um, now, unfortunately, the next step for this quest is it, it's done. The, this quest is done. Uh, but head on over here to the schoolhouse classroom. He's super excited to go back to the academy and learn lots of things and, you know, uh, he got back to the academy, all right. You round this corner and there's Thops just uh dead so you get his bell bearing you get thop's barrier glintstone staff uh but yeah that's it for thop's quest line so <laughs> kind of a messed up way for things to end uh but anyway let's go do, 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 to the debate parlor and we're gonna make our way to ranala and of course we picked up some extra smithing fours so if you were low make sure you get that weapon up to plus 13. it's obviously going to help a lot in the upcoming encounter uh, and then, of course, having uh, Thop's Barrier on a shield can also be really helpful here because of the spell parry that it offers. Now, if you followed along in the last part, of course, the giant ball that is rolling down the bridge is now deactivated. If that ball is still rolling for you, I would suggest you go back to the previous episode and stop watching them out of order. But head on down here and grab this. And then there's that other loot that's midway through. So let's start talking about Renala. Renala is one of the demigods, and she is a two-phase boss fight. So the first phase is a little bit gimmicky. It's pretty simple. She is going to be in the middle, and uh, these little weird dolls or whatever the hell they are are all around. You need to find the doll that has the bubble and smack it. After you have popped three bubbles, the boss will then fall out of the air, and she'll be vulnerable, and you can give her a boop. And then eventually she'll do a little AoE explosion, go back up in the air, rinse and repeat. Throughout this fight, you're going to have books and all kinds of other crap that gets thrown at you. Uh, so in a sense, the phase one is basically just like a DPS race. It's just trying to kill her as fast as you can. Now phase two gets a little bit trickier. Phase two, she is going to summon. The same way that you can summon up spirits, she can summon up spirits. But she can summon up things like trolls and dragons. Uh, now with the greater spirits, the stuff like the trolls and the dragons, you can actually just avoid them completely. If you see a dragon summon up, just haul ass in the opposite direction. That dragon's going to despawn within about 10 seconds. Uh, if it's something small like wolves, just go ahead and beat on her. Now in particular, she is very easy to stagger. She ain't got any poise. So if you were playing as somebody that has a little bit more FP, the demigod ashes... They will just stagger her left and right. They'll just all group up and beat on her. She's not going to be able to fight back. Uh, Oleg will beat on her. I can't. I don't know if how well Lutel works because I think of Lutel as more of a like move and juke kind of guy. But I know Oleg will just beat her into the ground. And on my first playthrough, Demi Human Ashes beat her into the ground. And if you're playing a character like me, and you know you only have access to these cheaper ashes, that's okay because we're going to beat her into the ground with our weapon instead. Uh, but so anyway, head on in. I would suggest saving your flask for phase two, because phase one isn't super threatening in my experience. There's our first ball. Sweet Pop it. There's the next ball. There's, there's the next ball. See that glow start rolling away. I waited too long and got greedy. 
Let's see, books and all the stuff rolling at us. Uh, when she starts doing this and pulling the sweetings into the air, you want to either get in cover or hurry up and get the pops. Um, otherwise, you're going to want to hide. She's going to start throwing stuff at you. I'm just kind of running around in the background right now. We're looking for the last one, and I am not seeing it. Yeah, so she's throwing the stuff at us right now, and you can see some of the bookcases are going to crumble. There's that third orb. I just need to, as soon as I find that orb, she's dead. It's just finding it. There it is. Like I said, this, this part's a little bit of a gimmick fight. And right there, what I did was just charge up a heavy to boop her as she was coming down. Now, right at the start of the second phase, just get ready to run, because she's going to open it up with a, uh, a huge spell that is just going to nuke you. It's basically a Kamehameha wave. So, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Now is a good time to use your flask. Um, I don't have my summons. That's okay. You know what? I'm going to do this without summons. You can see the staggers already. When she turns into a moon, just go away. That moon will chase you, but you can roll through it. So, I'll, I'll show the moon. Actually, her moon's not as aggressive. That yeah, fell short. Now we're gonna get our summons up. As I mentioned, spell parry your shit too. She can also throw her scepter around, but for the most part, as you're saying, you can really bully her. Okay, so she summons up the giant. Just back up. Back up. Let the giant do his thing. We're just gonna hang out. Same with the dragon. And you can see the bigger ones, they're gonna fade away. So didn't need to fight the giant, didn't need to worry about it. I just let the giant do his thing. And it's the same thing with the, the dragon. If she summons the dragon, just run away. After the dragon despawns, go back in. Uh, if you're dealing with a lot of the little summons, one of the better things that I have found, of course we get a trophy for her, she's a demigod, uh, but one of the better things I have found is for you to just back up, you know, dodge her spells, let the wolves come to you, and then run on in and try to beat her ass. And while the wolves are catching up, you can usually take care of her. Where did he flee, my sweetings? Come out Weird ass NPC. Uh, so with her down though, we now have access to the ability to respec. Uh, for getting her, we have her great rune, and we don't need to go to a tower to activate this how we did with Godric's great rune. Having two great runes is also the main trigger that allows you to proceed through the capital, so if for some reason you're trying to, to, to speed run the game and not do some kind of crazy glitch that skips you to the end, at this point, you could proceed through the capital and clear that guy and you know, keep going on now that we have two runes. But let's talk about it. Isn't so going ahead and talking to her, she'll talk about rebirth. You can, of course, do your cosmetics here as well, but we can already do that in the mirror. Uh, but going to rebirth, this will use a larval tier. No. You would hit yes. And at this point, we could redistribute whatever we wanted. So if I'm like, you know what? I think I, I went kind of heavy on strength. I think I want more endurance. You know, I'm going to go 25 endurance. I'm going to keep my vigor right where I wanted it at 40. And then, you know, I want these more, more, a little bit more even. So we'll go like 25 and, you know, let's, let's do this. And you can see how I'm able to tweak these. And then when I hit confirm, those are my new stats. Uh, now, a couple things. This is limited by the amount of larval tiers you have. You're going to get quite a few of them in your playthrough. Uh, there are some enemies you can farm for them. But in general, just kind of going through, expect 10 plus uh, respects per playthrough, which I think is, is plenty to experiment and test things out with. Um... If you don't want to use back out at any time, and you will not use your larval tier. When you respec, your stats go back 
to the base level of your starting class. So for example, because I started out as a Vanguard, my Arcane is always going to go back to 7, and Int and Faith are always going to go back to 9. I can't actually change my starting class, but I'll get back all of my initial stat points. Be not alive. I would be so yeah, if you want to respec now, if you want to mix things up, if your build has been really struggling and you're like, you know what, I want to be a mage, or you know what, I don't like the weapons, I want to be a fast boy and use katanas, now you can do that. Uh, over here, we have a chest. This is part of Ronnie's quest line, so just ignore it for now. It can't even open until we get uh, a key that's that's much later into the game. Uh, so, with her done, though, heading on back to the round table. Because we're about to get something good. Head on up into here. Talk to this lady. And with two great runes. So there's some dialogue. We're just going to burn through that. It's just the, the weird guy talking, but you'll see we now have the Talisman Pouch. Which bum, 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 bumps us up to three Talisman slots, which is fantastic. Oh, let's see. How do I even want to run? What do I want at this point? Um, if I do the Faith, I could use Blood Flame Blade a lot. That is a fun spell to work with. Get me bleed. Uh, these are mostly garbage. I could rock Arsenal Charm and put on some cooler looking armor. Mm. Let me see. Let me see what kind of armor I, I have that I would want to wear. No, I don't even have any cool armor yet. Yeah, let's go. I can, I'll put this on. That way I can rock Blood Flame Blade. Uh, as for the stuff that we can get from the Remembrance, both of these are fantastic for casters. So for casters, this is what you should work for, in my opinion. Um, I consider this to be the best staff in the game. There's a staff we can get later that has slightly higher sorcery scaling, and it actually gives a flat damage increase to all your sorceries, but it increases the cost of all of them by 50%. So you get a 10 to 15% damage boost, depending on, on how high your int is, you know, because the scaling is higher. Um, but things cost 50% more. And to me, a 13% damage increase on average for a 50% increase cost is not worth it, and not in the slightest. Uh, you are going to burn through your FP so fast using Lucid Staff. So, Carrion Regal Scepter, I feel this is the best staff in the game. Uh, obviously, pretty hefty investment at 60 int, but it is it scales up very nicely. It's very good. Uh, the other spell, Renala's Full Moon. There are actually two different moon spells in the game. This one is the hardest hitting. Uh, this thing is the same moon that she was doing at you. It starts off slow, and then it ramps out and slams into the enemy. It's also going to debuff an enemy and cause them to take 10% increased magic damage after it connects. So definitely a really useful spell to use to like open the boss fight. Like You throw one of these out, you hit the boss, and then all of the magic you're doing is going to be hitting harder. I personally like using it in invasions, but as more people use it, more people are going to realize you can just roll through the moon, so it's not the best thing for PvP, but boy, when it connects, it is funny to watch somebody explode by getting hit with a moon in the face. Um, of course, you can just go ahead and you can use the mausoleums to just duplicate the remembrance and buy both of these if you're a caster. Um, the other moon we get significantly later in the game. Um, it's slightly weaker than this, but it causes a huge amount of frostbite, so... That's a consideration. If you want Frostbite in your build, you'd be better off with the other moon we get access to. But being that we are a melee build, I have no interest in either of those. So y'all know what that means. We are going on over. And we are gobbling it up. Yum, 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 yum. All right. And now we're going to spend our souls. As I mentioned, I really want to get a little bit more into stamina. Uh, in terms of stamina, you're going to get stamina returns all the way up to, to uh, 50. Uh, equipment load returns, the main breakpoints are 25 and 60. So I'm going to get this up to 25. And the 25 is a pretty healthy spot, I feel, for very melee focus builds. If you're going past 25, usually it's because you want more equip loads. So going up to 30 or going up to 40, um, that's usually because you're a thick boy and you know you're trying to wear thick boy armor. But so we're going to dump points into there for now. Uh, let's see. Dumb Renala, Dumb Thops, uh, Carrie and Manor. That could be a whole episode on its own. So instead, let's go to Ravine Veiled Village and we'll actually knock that out. I think that, that we should be in a good position to knock this place out. Now, as a disclaimer, going through this area, as I mentioned, it can connect you to the Altus Plateau. 
and we do, will not be resting in Altus. There are two triggers that will trigger the festival down here with Radon. The first is resting at the Altus Plateau. The second is talking to Ronnie, which is why we haven't done the Caria Manor just yet. Now, you could clear the Caria Manor right now, and you could do the couple things that are over here. But once you head on over here and you talk to Ronnie, who is actually Renala's daughter, uh, that is going to trigger the festival. And we don't want the festival to happen for a bit, because there's still all of this stuff. We haven't really touched any of this stuff in here. Uh, there's an underground area over here. There's an underground area over here. And we are going to do all of that stuff. And then we're going to be heading on out and doing this region. And then we're going to go talk to Ronnie after we've cleared out a bunch of Kaled. So uh, the, the purpose in the approach I'm taking here is ultimately to not only try and cover all of the content of the game, but also cover it in a manner where you're hitting each zone at a level where you are, you are comfortable enough to tackle that zone. I mean, you could probably go as far as to say that, that we're overleveled at this point. And I think in a sense we are. We didn't, you know, farm to get overleveled. We didn't grind to get all the way up at 66. Uh, but just naturally playing through the game and, and knowing where to go and when to kill what when, uh, it's very easy to, to rack up those levels in a nice healthy manner. So head on in. Kill that guy. I'm gonna head up on top. This area is pretty easy. I have very minimal notes here. I said, stay to the left killing dudes. That's all, that's all my notes say. Stay to the left killing dudes. I'll unpop this. Uh, these guys actually have a really cool glaive. You can kind of see it. It's like this, almost the same moveset, but it does bleed. So if you get one of those to drop and you're doing the quality build, I would recommend it. It's quite nice. Unfortunately, it's kind of a pain in the ass to farm it from here because, you know, we have to climb up those ladders every time. I think that's all of them. I'm just confirming. Oh, there we go. One more. They're sneaky little things. All right. I'm going to go on and pop one of these. Just get rid of the poison. I believe that is done. But let me check more. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We've killed all of the little buggers. Uh, let's see. Let's kill next room. Clear everything before going straight. I don't believe there was anything back here. No, we're good. I do want some different fashion. Which I know at this point in the game. I also felt like there were no armor sets. And that's the thing with this game, is like you don't realize just how big the game is until you really start getting into it. Because at this point, you know, you'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I, th I feel like we've done a fair amount of this. We've done a lot. But like, no, we haven't. We're 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 at the tip of the iceberg. Um with Renala down to put it in perspective, I would estimate Oh um or them out. I would say we are 15% through the game. So yeah, it's it's long. It's really long. Get this guy with a big juicy backstab. Isn't Horror Frost Stomp just beautiful? A lot of people think that's going to get nerfed in PvP. Just because it's it's a really good roll catch. And for those that are wondering, you know, when people are rolling away, there are certain moves that are just really effective at kind of popping them as they're coming out of that roll. Horror Frost Stomp is one of them. Very good roll catch, very good range, very wide. Uh, this thing's going to explode, so just poke it and roll back. A somber four. Uh, so we did all that. Have to kill some bats, and then we take the ladder down for a somber four again. Some soft cotton. 
I guess with this grace, this is probably, yeah, if you really wanted to get that weapon, this would probably be the better place to farm it. I mean, at least better than going all the way up to beast land and farming it there. But it doesn't have the reach of this bad boy. Grab some stuff. Where's that ladder at? It's do ladders up ahead. Love the halberd for dealing with these guys. It's because it's so like it has such a good vertical swing on it. Like, oh, you're flying. You're not, you're not flying anymore. Stop. Go. We can just drop. Sombering four. Grab that. We got a couple different bats to kill over here. Oh, and by the way, this thing, same thing on the Warhawks, just boops them. Fantastic weapon. Honestly, it's like, it, it, it's quickly, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite weapons in the game. Just has such amazing reach. Okay, and then, oh, hang on, I think this is the part. Is this the hop-up part? Yes, it is. Go, somber three. And up we go. Okay, um, now there's more bats here. And the singing is actually another bat. And those are like matriarch bats, so you can see her just kind of chilling there. Uh, they're a little more deadly, so we're actually going to kind of rush her down. Let's see, taking four hits to take her out. You hear a baby waking up from his nap. I'm going to close the office door real fast. It was a necessary sacrifice. Last thing I want is baby screaming on the walkthrough, but you know, life with kids, what can you do? Uh, so we got the smithing stone. I don't believe there was anything else down here. Let me see got the notes here. Uh, kill some bats, do 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 up ladder, jump to pillar for rune five, continue up ladder and swing around for the octopus and serpent swords. I don't believe there's anything over here. No, okay. jump across, and then go around to the right. A little hidden goodie there. Back we go. Boop that guy. Boop that guy. This thing is dirty, man. I'm sure some people were like, man, some of these people got plus 10 weapons. What are we going to do? Like, this halberd is straight just demolishing everything. Plus 10 weapon? More like give me a long stick that pokes. Uh, so before we go to them, there's some stuff over this way we're going to go get. Get a uh, pretty cool curved sword this way.
I have no idea how this thing managed to get up here. Charged heavies mess these things up. Moves them up with that critical. And you, you don't need to kill it to get that item, by the way. You can just walk up and grab it, but I mean, they're very inconsequential enemy. You just kind of obliterate them like that, and you're set. top off because we got double matriarchs here. This part can be a little tricky. Anytime you walk into an area and you see a bunch of bloodstains, you know it's worth being a little cautious. Get frosty! loots here and there to grab. I don't believe there's anything around the corner. Oh, there is. Oh, a little tucked away. What do we get? Lost Ashes of War. That's actually pretty useful. Glad I took a peek. That is one one change. In the previous walkthroughs, I would denote every single little thing, and there's so many little things tucked away. I'm usually just, like, briefly writing, like, dent, 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 dent. Just making a checklist of stuff to grab. Or sometimes in the notes, I'll just write, like, Swing around and grab the shinies, and then I get up there, and I'm like, where, so where, how many shinies were there again? Anyway, rest up, and then we're gonna fight a magma worm. I want to say this guy is worth a trophy, but it, I don't remember if it's this particular magma worm, but we're gonna find out in a second here. Um, pretty easy fight, though. You, you should be fine taking this guy out. Now, there can be two potential signs here. The first is that dude who, who sold his prawns. I don't think he's gonna be worth summoning. If you really want to bring somebody along, Great Horn Tragoth is the bro. I would suggest him. Um, I'm not sure if this is tied to a quest, to be honest, because we're not that far in the walkthrough prep. A lot of people are like, you know, where's the walkthrough? Like, y'all, we're, we, are, we are actively making this guide. Like, the stream to prep all this just happened a couple days ago. Uh, but summoning him gets you the casual greeting emote, so you want to do that. Uh, as for this thing, if you want, you could go for either uh, Blood Grease or you could use Dragon Wound Grease. Dragon Wound Grease should work on the worms. Um, I actually put Lightning Grease on. I mean, that's that's the age-old Dark Souls method, is you lose lightning against worms. But this guy shouldn't be too bad. I mean, I have Blood Flame, but like, let's be honest, it's, you know, it's a magma worm. Uh, but yeah, Tragoth, Tragoth can do really good here. He's just, he's gonna zug zug and he can smash this thing and get some, get some good stagger in him. to do is just avoid the lava and kind of find a opportunity to just smack it in the back. This will honestly, this might be one of the hardest bosses you'll have fought to this point just because of how hard it hits and it's healthy. that sword slam is quite strong. This is another one of those reasons that I said it's, it's really good to level up your bigger because otherwise, sword slams like this, man, they're taking you out. Now, of course, this guy is easier to kill without the summon. You know, his health pool won't be nearly as long, uh, which on the note of summons, one important thing I want to mention, a lot of people seem to be worried about whether or not uh, NPC summons die. Uh, an NPC summon dying will never negatively impact your playthrough. As long as it is a summon, it doesn't matter. Summons can die, can live, that's all completely irrelevant. 
Now, if you kill the actual NPC out in the world, that could have a negative impact. So, I don't recommend killing any NPCs. I know we already killed one guy because I wanted a buckler early. Uh, but just as a general rule, I mean, I wouldn't kill, you know, you shouldn't go around killing people. Because even if they seem inconsequential, they're, you know, probably tied to a quest down the line somewhere just because that's how this game is. Spin the wind. Yeah, go look at Tragoth so I can just get you the frostbite. There we go. Magma Worm Makar is down. Dragon Hurt. Up the weapon, and it looks like he wasn't a trophy. Actually, he might have been a trophy boss. Man, let me see. I will confirm real fast, because I just remembered I had a second playthrough I killed him on. Magma Worm, Makar. Is there a trophy? There is a trophy for killing him. Good! See, look at that. I got y'all a trophy, and I didn't even remember that I got y'all a trophy. Before I created this save, I had a, uh, I did have a strength build that I was running around with doing stuff. Um, <laughs> I literally, like, rushed straight over to this guy, killed him, and then went up into the, the Altus Plateau to get the ring so I could invade other players at a low level with a greatsword, doing a knockoff Guts cosplay. Pretty bad, I know. Um, but yeah, so grab that. We got the Magma Worm Scale Sword. To be honest, this thing's not very good. Um, I mean, if you just want a Fire Sword, it can be decent, but the Magma Guillotine, I, I'm not a big fan of it. I feel like it has a low range, but you know, hey, maybe you'll be able to make it work. Um, anyway, with that guy down, we're not going to take this elevator. This elevator will take us up to the Altus Plateau, and we don't want to do that. So we're actually going to wrap things up. Uh, next episode, we're going to do the Carry a Manor real fast, just because a couple people have pointed out. They're like, you missed it, you missed it. We're going to go grab two quick loots that people have been uh, very adamant that I grab. I believe it was over there. Let's go grab these real fast. These are just tier knots. Um... In the scheme of things, they're, like, inconsequential, but, you know, you can use a tier knot to boost a particular stat up by five levels, so if you're, like, five levels short on using a certain strength weapon, you could use this to get those five levels. Obviously, this involves drinking your flask, and then when your flask runs out or uh, you die, you have to drink your flask again to have those stats, so personally, I'm not a big fan of them, but... Be honest, I'm just tired of people showing up to streams and being like the tear knots, the tear knots, the tear knots. You've got the tear knots. So I get it. You know, you want me to get everything. But as a reminder, I did say at the start of this series that there were probably going to be things that I was going to miss, and it was unlikely that I would get every piece of loot in the game just based on the sheer scope of the game. Oh god, so disappointing. Just gravity to ourself. I just gotta go north of the demi-human ruins. Oh, there's a stake. Good. I can probably I'd probably lose my... The stake's probably at the demi-human ruins, which means I don't get my runes. They're probably up top. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's sad. I'll pick up my runes on my own time. So, yeah, it should be uh, right over here or something. Where's it at? Oh, I gotta go much farther. Go past the ruins, and there should be a little circle. And by that circle should be some plants, and those plants are guarding it here. There it is. Oh, there we go. That's the faith knot here. I'm trying to run up. I'll just grab my runes since we're here. And I can't believe I... It's just barely... Just barely missed it. Okay, we got those, and oh. now we're gonna go. No, oh, not death touched. Um, I know is it over here? It might be there. I don't know. No. Yeah, let me go here. I think it's over. I think it's at that first one. It might be at the other one. I'll I'll check both. Like I said, at the end of the day, this is a, a very minuscule, inconsequential item. And the goal of this walkthrough is to 
get you your platinum and hopefully a lot of other stuff along the way, but I'm not really going to typically stress about little things like this. Strength Knot and Faith Knot are acquired. Uh, so with that, we're going to wrap this one on up. Let's try this Blood Flame Blade. What do I need for you? I probably need Arcane. Check the camp. What do you need? 10 Arcane. I'm at 7. E. 12 Faith. Yeah. Looks like I'm not going to be using Blood Flame Blade. That's unfortunate. Uh, but either way, next episode, we are going to knock out a bunch of stuff up top at the Caria Manor. So just to show you all where we're going. Um... <laughs> right here uh, once again I would highly suggest you don't just go through this area and talk to Ronnie on your own or you're going to trigger the Radon Festival so next part coming soon and I'll catch y'all then